So these people that are so evil, they don't know that there is a God who loves them. They don't know the love of God. So what are they naturally going to do? They are going to do evil because God is not in them. They do not know the love of God. So there's a whole world out there right now who doesn't know that God loves them. And you may go to those people and they'll just speak hatred at you. Why? Because that's all they know. That to them is love. That is their self-protection. That is their shell that protects them from feeling anything because they don't want to feel anything because feeling something is too hard for them. They've covered it all up, cemented over it over the years. They don't know that there is a God who wants to do great things for them. They don't know that there is a God who loves them. They don't know this. So all these people practicing evil in the world who are just downright evil, they don't know the love of the Lord. Hi, it's Lindley Eyes, and welcome to another episode of Truth Hunters, because then you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And the truth has always been of the utmost, but now more than ever, is it important to know the absolute truth of God's word. And that means reading the word of God through a new set of lenses, forgetting everything that has been taught to you previously about end times Bible prophecy and going through it yourself and praying first and praying as you do it and praying afterwards to see if you have actually been taught the truth. I don't care how much you think you know because so-and-so taught you this or this is what you've always learned. I cannot stress to you enough how important it is to go through the truth of God's word for yourself prayerfully and to really, really read each word slowly, slowly. Let me give you an example. And if this person is watching this video, uh, this person told me this last year, it was a woman. She wrote to me and said, did you know when the Bible says the joy of the Lord is my strength? We take it all to mean that our strength comes from having the joy of the Lord in us. Well, while that is true, that's not actually what that verse means. What that verse means where it says the joy of the Lord, it means belonging to the Lord, the Lord's joy. So what that verse means is the Lord is joyous when we are strong. So the Lord's joy is our strength is what that verse actually means. So it's very, very important that we go through the word of God and really dissect each and every word to see what it actually means. Because I've been doing that for a long time now and I am finding a lot of things in Bible prophecy that either are not there that we've been taught or words that have been wrongfully taught to us. Ooh, it's huge. It's so huge. So I'm finding a lot of stuff. So it's very important to go through the truth of God's word with a new set of eyes. So I've got my insulated cup tonight. It's chilly tonight. It's that time of year where the temperature is dropping, makes for a very nice fire. You know, it's really hard in the summertime when it's hot and humid sitting here by the fire. Although it's nice, it can get a little bit too hot. So it's very nice when the temperature is just crisp. It's not freezing cold, but it's cold enough that that warm fire feels oh so good. And so does my hot coffee going down. So no more fancy wooden cups for right now because I want my coffee to stay hot. And when I'm sitting here talking, I can't always take a sip of my coffee every few seconds. And then I waste a lot of it because it gets cold. So having trouble lately, I've been having trouble lately with these mics. It doesn't matter which mic I use. For some reason, sometimes it reverts to my cell phone microphone. So I can't tell until I take this all in and put it on the computer if it does that. So hopefully during this video, it will just use 
the clip on mic but if you notice at any time the audio is different and just I don't know what you call it like way over modulated that's because if it starts using the cell phone microphone I have to jack it up on Final Cut which jacks up all of the background sounds so I can't help it so I'll do the best that I can I don't even know what I'm gonna talk about tonight oh I just uploaded a documentary style video it's only I don't know, 44 minutes or something like that. If you have not seen it, you have got to go see it. I don't even remember what it's called. I think it's called The Mystery of God's Holy People or Holy Nation or something like that. It's got that picture. It looks like Jesus praying on the front. It's the last video before this one. If you've not seen it, you have got to see it very powerful the lord came to me and i just felt that unction in my spirit to go record so i sat down at the computer turned on the program and my microphone and just started recording and so the lord is just totally speaking through me and it is so so powerful it's empowering to be honest it's empowering downright empowering so you've got to watch that if you haven't seen it and you can help out too by sharing the videos that I produce and put on YouTube here. Because the censorship is so bad and I have a lot of people that complain about this and complain about that. And you have to remember, I'm viewer supported. So there's no guarantee that anything will come. It's just up to whatever the Lord moves people to give. So I'm sitting here making these videos, which take a lot of time and a lot of hard work and a lot of setup and a lot of editing, a lot, a lot goes into the production of them just for free, you know? So this is what I do full time and it's a lot of hard work, but then I have people who are getting it for free on YouTube coming and complaining about this or complaining about that and whatever. And the people who do that aren't even people who give. So I just do whatever I do and I try my hardest just to let the Lord speak when I record these videos. Looks like the fire's going down a little bit. So I may have to add some more wood to it to keep it going. And then we're going to just see where the Lord leads this discussion. The fire is really poppity tonight, huh? I like that though. So we'll see where the Lord leads this discussion. I do have a little bit of a word I wrote down as I was praying and spending time in the word of God. So I wrote down a word I was reading from Jeremiah and I'll go ahead and share that with you first. Okay, so I added some more wood to the fire. The wood underneath seems a little wobbly so I may have to break again to go tend to the fire. It is a lot of work to keep the fire going while I'm recording, but y'all don't really know about that very much because I edit that out or I hit stop and restart. And then by the end of it, I have like six or seven video clips I have to transfer from my phone to the computer. So that's the way it is. I mean, see, so I'm going to have to go fix that now. I will be right back. Okay. So that wasn't that bad. I just kind of piled them back up. So hopefully it'll last long enough that I can finally get started with this video message. So I guess I'll begin by saying, don't forget to subscribe to freedomnationnews.com. That's my website. It was down for a few days. And the reason for that is that I had totally forgotten to change my checking account card because my old one had expired so they took it down and I didn't get the emails because apparently the emails were going to an old email address that I had forgotten to change. And I never even thought of it because my card just, it always auto renewed every year. So the website's back up, it's doing good. So make sure you subscribe to freedomnationnews.com because my website is not censored and I will be posting all of my videos to YouTube on my website. Okay. With any, pertinent updates or anything like that. So make sure you go to freedomnationnews.com and subscribe. Now I'll tell you a little something. If you go to the landing page, there's no subscribe form on the main landing page, the home page. 
You have to click on any article, doesn't matter what article it is. If you do it from the computer, it'll be on the right hand side. If from a device or a phone, it'll be way down on the bottom, the subscribe form. Always double check and make sure you have the correct email address entered before you submit it, okay? Because of autocorrect or, you know, some people subscribe from a device or a phone and it's just really tiny. And if you're like me, you get something wrong in it. So make sure you fill it out correctly. Also, I'm having a new website constructed as we speak. And I will let you know when it's up. You can go ahead and bookmark it if you want, but there's nothing there yet. He's working on it. The guy I have doing it, but it's going to be truthhuntersshow.com. Again, that is truthhuntersshow.com. So you can go ahead and bookmark it now. But like I said, until I tell you, there's not going to be anything there. He's working on it. Okay. I don't know how long it's going to be until it's up. Hopefully it won't be too much longer, but I'll let you know. Awesome. Awesome stuff. So there will be freedomnationnews.com and truthhuntersshow.com. Subscribe to both. Well, you can't subscribe to the Truth Hunters. Uh, show.com right now because it's not up but when it is make sure you subscribe to it as well you can go ahead and bookmark it so here we are approaching the fall season the weather is changing the leaves are dying they're turning those beautiful colors isn't that amazing how the fact that they're dying makes them look pretty hmm kind of reminds me of our walk with the lord when we die to our old self and we give birth to the new, our new self in Christ Jesus, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Kind of like a caterpillar that becomes a butterfly when it comes out of the cocoon and it's just all so lovely. But before that, it was this ugly looking worm. Something to think about. We are more beautiful in the sight of the Lord when we put to death the old self, the old man of sin, and give birth to the new. You know, many of us continue walking in the life of sin after we say, Jesus, Jesus. How is that a new birth? How is that putting to death the flesh? Mind you, we all make mistakes and mess up, and we have to repent. But the problem is that many of us just continue living in the sin, and we don't repent. And we keep living in it and we are not truly living in our salvation as a result when we do that. I've been doing a lot of messages on that whole mentality of once saved, always saved. I get a lot of people angry and write to me. Well, I can prove that that's not true. And so can you to yourself if you sit down and read the Bible. It tells you over and over and over again. In fact, I have a passage I'm going to share with you that I came across while I was studying that just lends more proof to that. Now, just because you make mistakes and you're not perfect, that's not going to send you to hell. And that doesn't mean you're not truly saved because we all make mistakes. We're talking about willfully practicing sin. Practicing means you keep doing it the same thing over and over. You're living in it without repentance and you have to have a change of heart. So let's take someone who's really in bondage to something and they just, no matter what they do, they just can't seem to get free of it. And with their whole heart, they're going to the Lord with an ache in their heart, crying out to him, please help me. I can't do this. Please help me, Lord. Please help me. I can't do this over and over again. And they mean it from their heart because, you know, God weighs your heart first and foremost. And they're genuinely seeking the Lord and taking steps to try to get free from whatever this bondage is. I believe wholeheartedly that is counted as the beginning steps of repentance or toward the repentance. Now, remember, God knows your heart. So if you're just crying out to him and you don't mean it because you're just scared, I'm going to go to hell. That's not the same. We're talking about a genuine heart felt pleading with the Lord to help you with this thing, whatever it is. I believe God honors that you're in the act of repentance. 
You're seeking him. You're going to him. You're sorry for what you're doing. You don't want to do this thing, but you're in bondage to something and you keep pleading and begging and taking the necessary steps the Bible tells you as a believer to take and trying to win that race, then God is going to honor that as your steps toward repentance. And you have to keep on and keep on, just like Paul tells us to keep running that race, endurance, perseverance, you have to keep persevering. But I'm talking about these people that just live like the world and they're living in unrepentance and they're living in the sin and they don't really care. They may know in the back of their mind, I shouldn't be doing this, but it's not a big deal because after all, I have an insurance policy. They view their salvation as an insurance policy. And that's not at all what our salvation is. In fact, the biggest part of our salvation that we oftentimes overlook is love. Having a spirit of love even toward our enemies defines who we are in Christ to the rest of the world. That is what they see, this amazing love that we have and that we don't partake in the world stuff, we separate ourselves. In my previous video, the documentary style video I was talking about, it's about separating ourselves from the world and being part of the nation of God on this earth, which is a spiritual nation, okay? And we are truth tellers and we obey the Lord and we walk in his ways. It does not mean we're always going to be perfect. But it means we know the truth. We don't give ourselves over to the apostate teachings. We don't give ourselves over to lies. We don't purposefully live in sin or practice sin. We keep ourselves separate. We show love and kindness and humility to everybody. We boldly speak the truth in a spirit of love. Okay? I'm not saying that we act like that wishy-washy, watered-down, hippie Jesus the Hollywood paints a picture of, not at all. We are bold, we are strong in the truth, but we do so in a spirit of love. Now, one very integral part that many of us leave out is the truth telling part. I can't tell you how many times on social media I see Christians who want to coddle other Christians, don't tell them the truth, don't tell them this, that's negative, you're hurting them, you're harming them. Don't do this. You're going to turn them away. Um, if those people are believing lies, very important things that they've been lied to about, they're already on their way to hell. Okay, you have to tell the truth to people. We have to make sure we're following the real Jesus Christ, not the apostate Jesus. We have to make sure that we're being led by the real Holy Spirit not this antichrist false holy spirit and in order to do that we have to follow the real truth of god's word not the corrupted perverted apostate teaching of god's word so this is very very important but a lot of people for whatever reason don't feel it's important they feel that love is coddling and sugarcoating and babying and so on and so forth. But it's time that we get out there and tell the truth. You can do so and convey great love as you do. You don't have to scream and yell at people or curse them. My God, don't do any of that. You show them the truth of God's word. You tell them the whole truth. You explain to them why it's this way using the word of God and you don't back down from the truth. All right, that's so, so important. The reason I share these things with you is I'm going to share what I wrote down that the Lord gave to me. Then I'm going to share some scripture with you. So let me go ahead and fix the fire again. And then I'll be right back to share this message with you. I hear people all the time, pour myself some more coffee here. I hear people all the time say, well, how can this pastor or this person And another log just fell. I swear, it's not an easy night for me tonight, huh? But I'll go ahead and finish what I'm saying anyways before I go fix that. How can this pastor or that pastor or this person or that person 
be working for the enemy, this new apostolic reformation movement, or be an apostate when they're leading people to Jesus because they're winning the lost. Ah, but think about this, just something to think about. And I believe some people do truly get saved under them, but they're preaching an apostate message. And in the Bible, and I'll have to find the verse again, I quoted this verse quite a few videos ago. I read it. it it's one of the letters to the churches. It talks about specifically a different gospel that's being preached, a different spirit that is not the Holy Spirit, and it talks about a different Jesus. So what is interesting to think about is are all of these people that you see getting saved under the apostate church, are they truly getting saved by the real Jesus and the real Holy Spirit? It's a good, good question to ponder and think about. What about all these revivals? If you go back to the revivals like Brownsville and all that, led by people who belong to this NAR apostate movement, something to think about. Just think about it. Think about it. That's all I'm asking you to do is just to think about it. So that being said, I'm going to go ahead and I have to turn this way a little bit because I have to see to be able to read. I was reading Jeremiah 25 verses 31 through 38, which I will also share with you. So as I was praying and reading, here's what came to me, and I'm going to go ahead and share it with you, and hopefully I can read my own handwriting, which is usually pretty hard. It says, God is angry because his people refuse to repent with their whole heart. They have mixed themselves with the world and cannot be told apart. They have shared in the cup of hatred with the world, they refuse to come out from Babylon. They sin and they say it is not sin. They sin and they say, I will repent tomorrow. Let me lie in my filth yet another day. They sin and say, I haven't hurt anyone. They sin and say, God doesn't see. They seek a man and a system to deliver them. They look on at the destruction taking place in the world with hatred and contempt in their hearts when I have commanded them to love their enemies and pray for them. They go after idols and vanity. They call upon a Jesus who is not me. They follow a spirit that is not mine. They tickle their ears with a doctrine that is not mine, but of devils. They pursue strange gods and strange flesh that are not of me. They hold on to what belongs to the earth and reject my truth. Huh, so that was the word I wrote down. You know, it's election time. Everybody's fighting and arguing, the left and the right. Who's going to be the best leader for this nation? Who's going to fix this nation? Who's going to make this nation better? Who's going to end abortion? Who is going to put prayer back in school? Who's going to do all these things? But you have to step outside of the flesh for a second. You really do. Step outside of the flesh. Does the Bible tell us that these things are going to come to an end? Yes. When? When Jesus comes back and establishes the kingdom of heaven on this earth. What does the Bible say about us? It says we are strangers and aliens in a foreign land. It says our citizenship is not here of this world. It is of heaven with the Lord. So we're strangers and aliens. If we're strangers and aliens in a foreign land and our citizenship is not of this world, then are we supposed to fight like the world fights? And are we supposed to fight for the world system, which dominion right now until Jesus returns belongs to the devil? Yes, we're supposed to fight, but no, not like the world fights. Ephesians chapter 6, 10 through 20 tells us exactly how we are supposed to fight. And there's another verse that tells us that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal or of the flesh, but mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. So that brings about another problem 
by fighting the way the world fights, we are fighting the symptoms of the disease. God wants us to fight the root cause of the illness, which is the kingdom of hell, and he wants us to do it his way. Now, we don't rail against principalities like this apostate, new apostolic reformation, dominionist, kingdom now, Joel's army, whatever movement tells us to do. The Bible tells us not to do that, but we go to Jesus when it comes to principalities. Even the Archangel Michael said, the Lord rebuke you. All right. So we are supposed to fight things in the spirit because that's where the root cause of everything that we see happening comes from. So the fact that we see people out in the streets burning things down, blaspheming God, doing destruction, outright rebellion, killing people, beating people up, the fact that we see abortion taking place, the fact that we see blatant outright sexual perversions and sins all over the place, pornography, murder of children and infants and kidnapping and hatred and anger and adultery and just everything, okay? Everything that we see that's sinful and bad is a manifestation or a symptom of the disease and the root of the disease is the kingdom of hell. So God wants us to go to the root and uproot the evil and wickedness by doing it his way. And as long as we keep thinking that we're going to win the fight by going out and protesting and many of you say, well, I'm still going to do this and I'm still going to do that. What's the point? Seriously. And I know I'm going to get flack for that, but what is the point? It's not going to accomplish anything. The way that we accomplish it isn't by laying down and letting it happen. I'm not suggesting that. The way that we accomplish it is by waging war in the spiritual places, Ephesians 6, 10 through 20. That's how we accomplish it. But because many of us can't see it, we can't touch it, we can't smell it, we can't taste it. It is not something we can take within our hands. We think we're doing nothing. But what does the Bible say? I'm only telling you the truth of what God's word says, many of you will quote the Old Testament at me. Well, things were done differently in the Old Testament, but when Jesus came, Jesus became the law. Okay, Jesus is now the law. His first commandment was to love others, to love, and by doing this, you will have accomplished the rest of the commandments. Love your enemies, pray for those who wrong you, spitefully use you, love your enemies. If somebody comes and takes something from you, give him more. That's what it says. If, if he steals your coat, give him the other one. What do you think he's trying to say? If a thief comes to rob you, give him everything he wants. If, you, if somebody owes you something that you have loaned something to, let them have it. Don't make them pay you back. Wow, this is so crazy foreign to us foreign to our flesh. That's right. Because everything that Jesus taught us is foreign to our flesh. And if you're wanting to hold on to the mindset of the flesh, which is exactly what many of you out there hearing my voice and coming up against me with hatred and judgment and scorn and ridicule are doing, that is going to be between you and God. You are not taking the fact that your citizenship is not of this world seriously. Let that soak into your head. You are not a citizen of any nation of this entire world. Think about that. None of these nations, none of its governments, we don't rebel against the government. We don't rebel against anyone unless we are asked to do something that the Bible tells us not to do, like taking the mark of the beast or renouncing Jesus or denying our faith or anything like that, then we are allowed to say no and not do that. But other than that, we are to be peacemakers on this earth. We are to be humble. We are to love our enemies. We are to love our sisters and brothers in Christ. We are to do good to others. We are not to have any appearance 
of the world. And that is what sets us apart from the rest of the world because we are completely different than the rest of the world. We operate in a whole different realm, a spiritual realm that is foreign to our flesh. But you see, many of you listening to me cannot even begin to comprehend what I'm saying. What if I, if I don't stand up and fight against this in my flesh and take a stand? That's wrong. I have to stand up for what is right. Stand up for what is right. But don't stand up and fight the way the rest of the world fights. Don't stand up and fight the way the apostate church has taught you to fight. Stand up and fight the way the Bible tells you to fight. After all, if you're saying that you follow Jesus, and if you're saying, I've given my life to Jesus, do you call yourself saved? If you call yourself saved, that means you are saying that you no longer own your life. You no longer are in control. You have given your entire life, not parts of it, but all of it to Jesus Christ. Therefore, you no longer do your will, but you do his will. And you walk, move, breathe, run, sing, dance, and everything else. Go to work every day in the will of Jesus Christ, not in your own will. You no longer do anything you want to do because you see you gave it away. How can you still control and operate what you gave away? If you gave your car to your cousin as a gift, a free gift, all right? In fact, you were even so kind that you said, you know what, I'll pay the taxes for it when I give it to you. Does that mean you get to go over to your cousin's house and tell your cousin what he has to do with his car? You gave it to him. Does that mean you get to command him around and operate the car and go take the car from him? If you gave the car to your cousin, aren't you taking the car back? By going over and telling him what to do and then driving off with it at your leisure? That's not giving him a, a car. That's not giving him a gift. Okay? That's giving him a gift with strings attached. I can come over to your house anytime I want, day or night, take it back and bring it back to you whenever I want. That's not giving someone a gift. Jesus gave us a gift. He gave us the gift of salvation. So what happens when you give someone a gift and then they abuse that gift? Let's say it was just so precious to you. In fact, this was the most important thing that you even had and you freely gave it. You freely gave it to a bunch of people that didn't even care. They didn't even like you. They hated your guts. And it was the most special thing that you had. And you went and you just gave it away to a bunch of people who were going to destroy it. They didn't even care about it. All right, so Jesus gave you that gift and he will never take that gift back. But you can trash that gift and leave it in the garbage and walk away from it. So when Jesus gave you that gift, in return, you gave him your life. You gave up ownership of your life for the gift that Jesus gave to you. You accepted the gift. He said, here's the thing. If you accept my gift, you have to give up your life and give it to me. You ever think about that? Yes, it's a free gift wasn't free for Jesus. He had to die for it. But it's a free gift to us. But we have to, upon accepting it, give our life to Jesus Christ. We forget about the part that we have to do. How convenient that we forget about that. So you no longer own your life. You no longer own your life. You're no longer a citizen of the planet Earth. You are just an alien and a stranger here in this world with one purpose. What is that purpose? Ah, that purpose now that you've given your life to Jesus is to live for him. So if you live for him, what does that mean? That means that you do what Jesus has told you to do. Your whole life now, the direction of it, your goals, your destiny, it's all changed. You see, before you were destined to hell, you could live however you wanted. You could go out and party hardy, get drunk, sleep around, have parties all day and all night long, partake in every type of fornication there is, commit adultery, look at porn, 
and cheat and steal and lie and kill and just do whatever you want to do. And then you're subject to the laws of the earth. And then you go to hell. Okay. And then you are absent from the presence of the Lord forever. But in exchange for the free gift that Jesus wants to give to you in order to receive it, you have to repent for this life of sin. Even if you never really did anything, you're born a sinner and you, in exchange, give him your life, which means that you do everything that he wants you to do. Okay. That's what it means. Many of us don't think about that. So can we just continue walking in sin and use our salvation as a free ticket to do whatever we want or an insurance policy? No, we cannot. But many of us have been taught that we can. It's the hyper grace message. The hyper grace message tells us that you can get saved and just keep on sinning. You will lose a few crowns in heaven here and there, but you'll still go to heaven all you have to do is say, Jesus, come into my heart, be my savior, and try to be a good person. What's really funny is these people that say, you're preaching works. No, I'm not. Well, what is, what is the, the fake apostate message also preaching works? Try to be a good person. Try to do this and do that and go to church on Sunday and sing and dance and get into the spirit that isn't even the Holy Spirit get into the spirit and fall on the ground and flip flop and do somersaults in the middle of church and then go home and look at porno all day. Wow. What, what an awesome form of Christianity or go home and watch half naked cheerleaders jump around on the screen, hiking their legs up and say, well, I just look past that part. Well, you're still supporting it by watching it. Do whatever you want. Cuss. Hey, I slip a few once in a while. I do. I slip a few. Cuss, go smoke pot, drink, get drunk, lust, partake in the world's activities, get mad. Why should we get mad? As followers of Jesus, aliens and strangers in a foreign land among a bunch of people that are of a different seed, so to speak. Why should we get mad? We shouldn't be getting mad in the way that we get mad. We should be getting disturbed and sad to the point we pray for those people. Why? Because all of those people who don't know Jesus, who are doing these terrible things, they are going to spend an eternity in the pits of hell and they will never, ever come out they are going to spend an eternity in the pits of hell and they will never, ever, 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 ever come out. And they will be suffering. And what's so sad is a lot of those people were raised with problems. You know, maybe they had an alcoholic parent or they were abused as a child. Something traumatic happened that filled their heart with addiction, with hatred. Demons entered in. The devil takes advantage of people who are hurting. The devil takes advantage of broken people. The devil takes advantage of small children who are abused. And he enters in. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We don't wrestle against the flesh and blood, but against the kingdom of hell. So these people that are doing evil things, going way back to their childhood, Many of them have really messed up childhoods, fatherless, motherless, parentless. They raised themselves, abused by a relative, molested, sexually abused, beat up, mistreated. So these people that are so evil, they don't know that there is a God who loves them. They don't know the love of God. So what are they naturally going to do? They are going to do evil because God is not in them. They do not know the love of God. So there's a whole world out there right now who doesn't know that God loves them. They don't know the love of God. They only know emptiness and desolation. They only know my rights. What are my rights? 
well, you better get used to this. If you're a follower of Jesus, you don't have any rights because this isn't your world. The only rights you have is what the Bible tells you to do. So if you're going around saying, I have a right to this and that, you don't have a right to anything. All you have a right to do is to go to God and pray and spend time in his word, preach the truth of the gospel message to the people. You have the option of asking for forgiveness, but you see, you don't even have a right to be forgiven. You're only forgiven because God chooses to forgive you and you're forgiven by the grace of God when you truly repent. But this whole business of just living in sin and practicing it and saying, I'm sorry at the end of the night is not repentance. Repentance is a heartfelt decision to turn away from sin. That is what repentance is. This other stuff, that's nonsense. That is not repentance. Read your Bible, folks. What I really love is these people yelling at me and telling me I'm wrong and what I'm saying. They're people who don't really sit down and study their Bible or they do study the Bible, but in the back of their mind is this apostate teaching they've been told for years. And so their view of what they're reading is perverted. Ask God to remove the blinders from your eyes and read it for yourself. I'm telling you the truth. Many of you don't want to hear it. The devil doesn't want you to know the truth because the devil wants to deceive you to hell. People don't want to know the truth because they want to live in their sin. It's too hard to give up their sin, so they want to make excuses to continue living like the rest of the world. And repentance is not a popular message. After all, who wants to give up things that they enjoy doing? What man wants to give up that pornography that he can just press one button on his computer and see it all you know what man wants to feel like that, that's wrong you know it's sewn into our spirits every one of us knows deep down inside that that's wrong who wants to give up anything that is sinful ah i will tell you a truly saved person does a saved person who knows the truth of God's word does. Why? Because the spirit of God dwells within our temple. And the spirit of God convicts us when we sin and do wrong. Granted, there are sometimes hidden sins that you can pray, Lord, reveal it to me and he will. Okay, but overall, a true believer in Jesus Christ will shriek at the thought of this sin that they've been committing and they don't want it. It makes them feel filthy and disgusting. They don't want it. So here's where the grace comes in because there is grace, but not hyper grace. The grace comes in in that when we do mess up, we can be forgiven. The grace comes in in that here we are born into sin, born in a body of flesh that can be renewed and resurrected from the pits of hell by asking Jesus to be our Savior and repenting. The grace is that we are allowed to repent and now we have access to God, our Heavenly Father, through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. You see, the blood of Jesus was the fruit on the tree, the good fruit, the fruit that gave us life. Wine in the Bible is called the fruit of the vine, and then the Bible always compares wine to blood, like the wine press in the book of Revelation, and so on and so forth. So you see the blood that was shed on the cross, or the tree, for our sins is the fruit, the life-giving fruit for us, the blood of Jesus. And another interesting thing, if you think about it, it's very interesting in the Bible that the idols, most of the idols were made out of wood. And it talks about wood. So what did Jesus die on? He died on a cross that was made of wood. And his blood went over that cross. The biggest sin, according to the Bible, is idolatry. And you can make anything an idol from a person to your own child, which is also a person, to an object, it can be a cell phone, a computer, a device, a TV show, 
your job, anything, anything that you become obsessive about or that you just have to do, that can become an idol, all right? But why is it so hard for us to become obsessive about Jesus and obsessive about the truth of God's word? Well, probably because you live in a body that wants to sin. This immortal body that we live in, our house, is made of the earth. What did God make Adam and Eve out of? Well, he made Adam from the dust of the earth, and Eve was formed from Adam's ribs, which was also made from the dust of the earth. So our body belongs to the earth, to the earth it comes, and to the dust of the earth it returns. But our spirit, our spirit, the spirit within us, who we really are, has a choice to spend eternity in the pits of hell and to forever suffer eternal death and darkness or to dwell forever with a new body in heaven with the Lord. And that is, my friends, our choice. It is our choice to follow the devil to hell and his lies or to look into the truth of God's word and have our whole heart poured into it and to truly be in love with Jesus Christ and to truly want to serve God our Heavenly Father and to truly have the real Holy Spirit dwelling within our temple and to live eternally. But here's the hard part. Many of us get saved because we just don't want to go to hell. We're scared about going to hell. And so you see, that makes it really hard to obey the Lord because we haven't done this thing because we're really in love with him. We love what we know about God because he is a good God. He's righteous and holy. And I can be a child of the king and I can have a mansion in heaven and streets of gold. And, and then I don't have to go spend eternity in hell suffering forever. And that all sounds so good. But the real reason we get saved isn't really because of hell. That's just the outcome of not getting saved. The real reason we get saved is because we are passionately in love with the Lord and we passionately in that love want to serve him. We want to do things that are pleasing to him. We want to make him happy because we love him. What do you do for those you love? You sacrifice, right? You sacrifice, you give, you just want to make them so happy all the time. You want them to love you back all the time. Isn't that what love is? Sacrifice and wanting to please the other person. And that's what marriage is supposed to be a reflection of that between a man and a woman who both know and love the Lord. So it's sacrifice. So what do we sacrifice? We sacrifice our flesh each and every day that we wake up and we go to bed. We put to death the flesh and we put on the spirit of truth. We tell our flesh, no, you can't have that. No, you can't do that. No, no, no. In Jesus name, you can't. And when you're really in love with the Lord and you want to please him, it's not so hard. There can still be things that are hard, but it's not as hard because you're doing it for the right reasons. You're not just doing it out of fear because you don't want to go to hell. Loving our enemies. That's how I do it. I feel sorry for them. I feel pity for them. I just, in my mind, I just, all of these people, even people I don't personally know who I know are doing evil in the world, you hear about on the news, people I personally know who have hurt me horribly, and done wicked things against me you know right at that moment I had to be angry and hurt to get out of that situation sometimes you have to to get out of something you're in bondage to but ultimately how I do it is I picture that person as a small child and I picture them that they were somehow neglected abused which is a form of abuse, neglect, something. I just picture that and I picture that they don't know the love of God. They don't know that God loves them. That's why people live like that. That's why they sin. 
because the enemy Satan and the kingdom of hell came to those people when they were vulnerable and lured them in to wickedness. And this is the only love they know. The only love they know is that bottle they drink from every night or the drugs that they take or the pornography they look at or whatever it is. And then they act out the very abuse that they received. And they're empty and lonely and depressed. And you may go to those people and they'll just speak hatred at you. Why? Because that's all they know. That to them is love. That is their self-protection. That is their shell that protects them from feeling anything. Because they don't want to feel anything. Because feeling something is too hard for them. They've covered it all up, cemented over it, over the years. They don't know that there is a God who wants to do great things for them. They don't know that there is a God who loves them. They don't know this. So all these people practicing evil in the world who are just downright evil, they don't know the love of the Lord. Now there are some people that are just so evil, we can honestly say to ourselves, I believe, they are not even human. They, they were formed in the womb as a devil. All right, well, the only one who really knows that positively and absolutely is God and not us, and we are not their judge. We can judge that they're evil people doing evil things, and they need the Lord, and therefore, in forming our judgment about this, then we need to pray for them. So you see, when we make judgments, that is for the purposes that we pray for those people. And if there's a way to show kindness to any of those people, then we show kindness to those people. As Christians, we love our enemies and pray for those who spitefully use us and persecute us. That's what Jesus commanded us to do. It's God's call to say whether those people are real humans or not. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord, not yours. We make judgments and judge the fruit so that we know who to stay away from, who to mix ourselves with and not to mix ourselves with, so that we can make daily decisions, including who to pray for. We should pray for everybody, not just people who are broken and hurting, but everybody. Okay, but... You see, time is short and the devil's got most of us with our heads up our butts, hidden in darkness, speaking hatred and anger and hating and hating and hating and hating. And we're at the last hour. And so you see, we're not doing what we're supposed to do. And we're going to be partly responsible for a lot of people that go to hell because instead of loving them and praying for them, we were just too busy hating them we hate the sin we despise sin but we love the sinners and pray for them but who they can make our blood boil can't they they sure do and there is such a thing as righteous anger it's okay to be righteously angry as long as you do not sin be angry and sin not the bible says think about that this is very important Love was Jesus' first commandment to us, and many of us are ignoring it. Love is telling the truth. Speak the truth in love. Speak it boldly. But there can be no sin or hatred for a person in that love. Okay, you hate what they do. It doesn't mean you're never going to get righteously angry. We're not talking about righteous anger. We're talking about the sinful anger. And if you've been busy reviewing the words of the Bible, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you don't know what I'm talking about and you're just taking someone else's word for it, then you need to go review your Bible so that you will not sit here and in ignorance rebuke me in the comments or whatever telling me I don't know what I'm talking about. I've been kicked out of several Facebook groups. Glory to God. God bless them because my videos speak truth. And I've had to leave a few groups. My goodness, last week, there was some group I was in and I felt like a piece of bloody meat. Like all these people kept attacking me for my video. And it was like two videos ago about love. The video was about 
not hating and about loving people. And I was getting beat up and these people obviously didn't watch it. A couple of them said they did and that they uh, shrieked as they were watching certain parts. I was reading the Bible for crying out loud. So you see, you will get hated. You'll get the boot. You will get treated like filth, but it's okay. Jesus got the boot. He got hated and he got treated like the filth of all filth. And as his disciples on this earth, so shall we get used to it, get over it, say glory to God, praise the Lord. I'm being persecuted for Jesus Christ. Making people mad. Well, you're not really making the people mad. You're making the devil mad. And the devil is operating in those people in their minds and their thoughts and their understanding of things and so on and so forth. So that being said, now I'm going to go ahead and share that scripture with you. I promised I would share and it comes from Second Thessalonians chapter one. So Second Thessalonians chapter one is what we're going to read. So now we're going to read Second Thessalonians chapter one. I'm going to try to hold this lantern right here. That'll make it easier. Okay. It says, Paul and Silvanus and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians and God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We ought always to give thanks to God for you, brethren, as is only fitting, because your faith is greatly enlarged, and the love of each one of you toward one another grows ever greater. Therefore, we ourselves speak proudly of you among the churches of God for your perseverance and faith in the midst of all your persecutions and afflictions, which you endure. So it specifically mentions their faith and their strength and everything being great in the midst of their persecutions and their afflictions or in the midst of their suffering. This is a plain indication of God's righteous judgment so that you will be considered worthy of the kingdom of God for which indeed you are suffering. For after all, it is only just for God to repay with affliction those who afflict you and to give relief to you who are afflicted and to us as well when the Lord Jesus Christ will be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire. So the only promise of our relief is when Jesus returns or of course for many who have died before Jesus ever returns, you know, when they get their new body in heaven, dealing out retribution to those who do not know God and to those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let me read that again. Dealing out retribution to those who do not know God and to those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. These will pay the penalty of eternal destruction away from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. So right there, it says those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus, these will pay the penalty of eternal destruction away from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. What is being away from the presence of the Lord and the glory of his power? That is spending an eternity in hell. When he comes to be glorified in his saints on that day, and to be marveled at among all who have believed for our testimony to you was believed to this end also we pray for you always that our god will count you worthy of your calling and fulfill every desire for goodness and the work of faith with power so that the name of our lord jesus will be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of our god and our lord jesus christ so one of the things that I really, really like about that is it specifically talks about being afflicted and persecuted and suffering. And, you know, he's commending them for their endurance and their strength and their great faith in the midst of persecution and affliction and suffering. Affliction can be sickness, disease, trial, tribulation, anything like that. And he's just commending them. For this and that's how we ought to be and it is so hard sometimes when we're suffering and going through things to really have the kind of faith where we could just sit there and praise the Lord as we're going through it many of us sometimes tend to 
ask God, have we done something wrong? Why am I going through this? Why are you doing this to me, God? While it is important to always step back and look at our lives and see if there could be anything that God is trying to show us because he does chasten after us. So that is important. At the same time, as we go through it, we praise him. The Bible even tells us to praise him when he chastens after us. So regardless of the reason, we praise him. Jesus said, if you love me, obey me or keep my commandments. Well, what I just read to you said the same thing, basically, that the ones who do not obey Jesus or the gospel of Jesus, which is not obeying Jesus, will spend eternity in hell. That's what he said, away from the presence of the Lord to eternal destruction. So it's very important that we remember, first and foremost, as disciples of Jesus Christ, living and dwelling in a foreign land as foreigners and strangers here in this foreign land, it's very important that we remember who we are in Christ and remember that we are not part of this world. We live here because we have this body of flesh. And so while we live here, we are to do the work of the Lord. That is first and foremost. It doesn't mean we don't also have other things we have to do like work to support ourselves and or our families or that we don't do human things that we have to do or that there is no enjoyment. You can enjoy things in your life as long as they are things that are pleasing to the Lord. If it's not something that is pleasing to the Lord and it is something that belongs to the world, okay, that, that is an avenue of sin, all right, then you shouldn't be doing it, such as some of those TV shows that people watch that are very worldly, but they think, well, it's okay, I just look away for the bad parts. Well, you may look away, but by you viewing it, you're supporting it. That helps to keep it on the TV. And that is the hardcore truth of the truth. We're not to do things that the world does. And you have to go to the Lord and have your own convictions about it. All right, you have to get into the truth. But many of us are avoiding getting into the truth for ourselves. We're just relying on other people being spoon fed or we're reading bits and pieces here and there. And you can't do that. Right now, it's important that we get into the whole truth of God's word, not just bits and pieces. Don't let anyone spoon feed it to you. Get into it yourself and see what it says and let the Holy Spirit convict you in your heart because you need to be convicted. Okay, we need to be convicted for things because there will come a point when it will be too late. So now is the time. I said in my last video at the end, the documentary style video, I said, I see a storm, not just any storm, but the storm of storms. And I do, I see a storm coming and many of us are not at all ready for that storm. We're not ready for what is coming. We think we are, but we're not in order to be ready. Okay. We're not just talking about physical preparedness. We're talking about spiritual preparedness. Many people do YouTube videos and all this stuff on all these sensationalistic things and everybody flocks to it and watches it and they get thousands and thousands of views. Well, those things can be interesting, but those things aren't going to save us from the destruction that is coming or prepare us for what is coming. You can know about what's coming. All you have to do is crack open your Bible, but you need to be spiritually ready for what is coming. And to be spiritually ready, you're going to have to know the truth of God's word, get it in your heart. You may not have access to it at some point, get it in your heart, know the truth so that you're not deceived. You also need to draw close to the Lord in prayer and in praise and in worship. We also need to be better about practicing the word of God. You see many of us read the word of God here and there, and we pray here and there, and we give God praise here and there, but we fail at every corner at practicing the word of God. There's a verse in the Bible about that, about the man who looks into the mirror, and then as soon as he walks away, he forgets what he looks like. And that is pertaining to a person who 
reads the word of God, but then does not apply it to their life. So as a follower of Jesus, we ought to be practicing the word of God a billion times over and then some practicing sin. But for so many of us, it's the exact opposite. Instead, we're mostly practicing sin and practicing the word of God very little. And brothers and sisters in Christ, this ought not to be. Do you know who you are in Christ? If you've given your life to Jesus, you are a follower of Jesus Christ. He is your high commander. It is no longer your life to live, but your life in Christ and your life belongs to him. That's how you hide yourself in him. One of the ways you hide yourself in him anyways is you've given your life to him. So if you've given your life to Jesus, then you have to stop treating it as if it is still yours. I want you to think about that. No one's here to condemn you, but somebody is here to love you and to love you enough to speak the truth to you, even though many will reject it. Many will persecute me in the comments for speaking the truth, but speaking the truth to you is a great act of love because I know that I will receive hatred and criticism for the very words that I speak. I've already noticed the past few videos, I've lost a lot of financial support for speaking the truth. And that's part of what I'll go through. But I have to speak the truth. I cannot be one of these people that sits here and just tickles people's ears so that I get money. The love of money is the root of all evil and I can't do that, I have to trust that God will continue blessing me so that I can continue doing this as I do, okay? Because this is my full-time job. This is what I do. This is my ministry. I can't lie to you all. And there are some, unfortunately, who will either procrastinate and they, they accept what I'm saying. They'll procrastinate until it's too late. And there are also some who will totally reject what I'm saying and they will never receive the truth and unfortunately they will spend eternity in hell but there are also those who will receive what i'm saying and they will go to the lord immediately and get down on their knees and pray and ask the lord to reveal things to them and ask the lord to help them with the areas in which they're weak and they will repent and truly try to serve the lord the way that we are supposed to as followers of Jesus Christ. So that being said, this video has gotten rather lengthy. I'm gonna go ahead and say a prayer. I would ask you to please hang out and wait for the prayer. I'm just gonna mention real quick, I am mostly 100% viewer supported. So if you feel led or moved to sow a gift into this ministry to help me continue sharing the truth to people all over the world, and I do reach people all over the world, you can do so via my PayPal or my PO box. The information is on the screen and beneath the video in the video description. Thank you to those of you who have been giving. I really appreciate your financial support. It's because of you that I'm able to continue sharing the truth. And to those of you watching, whether you can give or not, I would ask you with all my heart, please help me get the truth out. Help me fight the censorship by sharing these videos everywhere that you can, liking them, that really, really helps. So please help me out with that. And if you're one of those people who can't do anything to show support, you can greatly make a difference by sharing these videos. Don't forget to download the free app for the free show, Truth Hunters. It is available for Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire, and there is a free app for any Android or Apple device. There's also a web link. So make sure that you download the free app today. Who knows how long I will be here on YouTube. So make sure you do that. And don't forget to subscribe to my website, freedomnationnews.com. Again, click on any article from the homepage and you will see it on the right-hand side of the screen from your computer. If you're on a device or a phone, it's at the bottom. You'll have to scroll down double check, make sure that you have filled it out correctly before you submit it. Uh, there have been people who 
have a autocorrect typo or something in it. They don't know why they don't get the updates. That would be why. So I think that's about it. God bless you. Let's go ahead and say a prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you for this time together. Lord, help us to glorify you in everything that we say, everything that we do, how we live our lives. Let us be an example of Jesus Christ to a lost world who does not know that they're loved. Lord, help us to really just radiate the love of Jesus Christ to a lost world. Father, there are so many people out there who don't know that they're loved and they're caught up in all sorts of stuff and in hatred and they don't know they're loved. So Heavenly Father, I just praise you and I thank you that you will just help us to really, really be an example to the lost and the unrepentant. Help us to not just offer up lip service, but heart service, Lord. Lord, I pray that these truths reach everyone that they're supposed to reach, Father, all over the world, and not one person, not one person who is meant to hear it will fail to hear it, Lord, but they will hear it. And I ask that you open the hearts and the minds of the people who stumble upon this video or who hear this message, and that you will just confirm the truth to their heart. Lord, we pray for the leaders of all the nations. Father, we just pray for them because you've commanded us to pray for them. Whether they're good leaders, evil leaders, it doesn't matter. We just pray for them, Heavenly Father, that you speak to them, Lord. You have a plan, and whatever your plan is at this time, we know we're in the end. Heavenly Father, let your will be done through the leaders of this world. And Father, I just pray that you send someone to the leaders, all of them, of this world, that would offer them the opportunity to hear the truth. Time is so short, even if it's just that one last time to plant a seed before it's too late. And Heavenly Father, help us to begin to have a heart for our enemies and for the people doing wicked in this world to have a type of love that comes only from you, an agape love, that we can minister your love to them, Father, that we can just somehow do that however that is show us how you want us to offer those people love and there's many of them we just see in the news the only thing we can do is pray for them lord but if there's people in our path father that are our enemies or sinners or lost people lord just give us the words to speak show us what to do but let us always be an example for you have called us to be set apart different father different than the rest, a holy nation. And a holy nation is a spiritual nation, not a nation that is of this world, but your people, Lord, who are scattered all over the world, united through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, standing firmly on the truth of your word. Lord, we just praise you and we thank you, Lord, and we magnify your name. Thank you for this blessed time together and the ability to be able to make these videos and, and to upload them and that people all over the world can see them. In Jesus' mighty name, I also want to pray for the children, Lord, our children. Many of us have family members, children that just don't know Jesus as their Savior or they've wandered away, Lord. I just pray because time is so short, Father, that you would just quickly send someone to them or just let them have an experience, Lord, that that will just make you real to them again, Father. We just thank you and praise you in Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. And please remember when I share these messages, I share these messages out of a heart of pure love for you to get the truth to you. You may not see that right now. Right now, it may make some of you hate me. It may make some of you angry, okay? But I would rather have you angry at me now and have planted a seed of truth that may take root and sprout up here in the days to come. And then you realize it was the truth and it pulls you out of a life of sin and saves you from the flames of hell. And not only saves you from the flames of hell, but once you really open your mind and your heart to the real true things of the Lord, I can't even begin to really explain it. You begin to see things 
through a whole different set of eyes. You will understand some of the things I say that you think are just way off, like how we're not part of this world. We can't engage in the things of the world the way the world does. Instead, we pray. Some of you think I'm telling you don't stand up and, and take a stand and fight. Yes, I am telling you to do that, except I'm telling you we have to do it God's way. Our flesh has a mind of its own and our flesh wants to do it the flesh's way. But the Bible says once we get saved, once we become that new creature, we walk in the spirit, not according to the flesh. And I know that's so foreign. It is so foreign to our flesh. But I tell you this in a spirit of love, because if I don't tell you, there's many of you out there, your blood will be on my hands. So I have to warn you, and I have to warn you that most of us have been taught a bunch of lies. And that is why I keep urging you in every video to please get into the word of God for yourself prayerfully and find the truth. And that is why the theme of this show, Truth Hunters, is then you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. There is freedom in knowing the truth, even though it might be hard, difficult, painful for some of us. There is freedom in knowing the truth. I do encourage you in your search for the truth to start with the book of John. Don't read it fast. Pray first. Read it very slow. Go over each and every word. Pay attention to the first verse, even though some of them seem I don't know, boring to some of you because it's going over to this person and that person, blah, blah, blah. There are huge keys to understanding some of this in that very first verse. So study it, read it, do word studies, cross-reference, pray, do all that you can because time is that short. And I just keep feeling that urgency to tell y'all to get into the truth of God's word. Do not rely on me. Don't rely on anyone else. Rely on the Lord and the Holy Spirit and get into it for yourself and find out what God is really saying. And I guarantee you, once you do, many of you will find out that you've been lied to. So God bless all of you. I love you all very much. Don't forget to share and like this video. Be abundantly blessed. Until next time, remember, then you shall know the truth. And the truth of God's word shall set you free from the bondage of this flesh, the bondage of sin. And really, my friends, as followers of Jesus Christ, as his disciples, as foreigners in a strange land, knowing the truth and sharing the truth is of the utmost.